Howdy folks, Jabberiki here. In the last episode of Puppet Panic, I let a certain someone else decide the next episode of this show. Hmm, I wonder how you play this thing called Mario Kart. Uh... <laughs> oh! Something I immediately regret. The Garbage Pail Kids started off as a series of trading cards created by Tops, sold with free gum in each pack. The cards were supposed to be parodies of the sickly sweet Cabbage Patch Dolls toy line. These cards were such big sellers with kids that a feature film adaptation was greenlit to cash in on the craze. Dodger is a 14-year-old boy who works for a magician called Captain Manzini in his quaint little antique store. Unfortunately, Dodger is always being harassed by a group of bullies led by a guy called Juice. Dodger secretly has a crush on one of these bullies, a girl called Tangerine who's dating Juice. One day, Juice finds Dodger hanging out with Tangerine in the antique store, a fight breaks out and a garbage pail is knocked over. This unleashes a band of rude, noisy children with deformed features. These garbage pail kids have traveled to Earth to find their friends. Mancini is annoyed to discover that this has happened and makes Dodger take care of them all himself. When Tangerine sees Dodger wearing a snazzy jacket made by the Garbage Pail Kids, she asks him to make clothes for her so she can start her own fashion business. He's reluctant at first, but Tangerine deviously seduces him into complying, falsely making him believe that she likes him. The kids will only help Dodger if he can find their friends, who might be prisoners at the state home for the ugly. Meanwhile, Captain Mancini tries to find a way to send the kids back to their pail. This movie is almost fascinating in how awful it is. The very idea that these cards were deemed worthy of a cinematic story was already baffling, and the filmmakers were clearly conflicted on how to adapt the characters. It's like it wants to be a dark comedy that subverts all things sweet and corny, but it also wants to be an uplifting fairy tale about inner beauty. The clashing of these intentions result in both directions counteracting each other. Those reading it as an endearing, cute family movie about appreciating what's on the inside will see the message being tarnished by how these unconventional looking characters are awful on the inside causing violence and harassment wherever they go, not being much better than the bullies who pick on Dodger. While those who read this film as an anarchic deconstruction of sentimental values will be put off by any attempts to make the film more heartfelt or poignant. Not everyone was on the same page while making this film, so audiences are going to be confused whether they're supposed to hate or sympathize with these kids. But I'd say the film leans more towards being a gross out mean-spirited comedy. Now, I know some people love when a children's movie goes for a more dark direction because it shows that the filmmakers were taking a risk. But sometimes a line still needs to be drawn. There's a point where a kid's film becomes so bleak, so gruesome, and so cruel that it's hard to praise it for thinking outside of the box. I think this movie goes past this line, with its grotesque puppet characters, over-frequent scenes of bullying, musty colour schemes, and the fact it's set in a world where children get executed if not pretty enough. It's hard to find the appeal or pleasure from a kid's movie that's this grim and repulsive, especially when it doesn't even make for a funny black comedy, limiting the humour to lowbrow gross-out jokes, with each kid having the same disgusting trait all the way through. And these icky attributes are the only character definitions for the Garbage Pail Kids. It also doesn't help that Dodger, the biggest victim to the movie's mean-spirited nature, a character who is abused by bullies who should have bigger fish to fry at their age, and creepily manipulated by the cold, vapid tangerine through seduction, doesn't get to stand up for himself until the very end of the film meaning that we have to watch him suffer, cry, and be a pushover for most of the movie. Yes, the scene where he turns down Tangerine provides the message that looking beautiful doesn't inherently make you a beautiful person. Look, maybe we can just be friends. Maybe we can just do fun things together. No thanks. I don't think you're pretty anymore. But this coming-of-age moment happens way too late. 
I'm sorry, but it's hard to sympathize with Dodger when he can clearly see how horrible this girl is, as she's far from being subtle about being a terrible person, yet he doesn't turn her away until we're minutes from the credits. I get that he's got a crush and lovesick teenagers don't make the best decisions, but this is really pushing it. The film does try to show a more sympathetic side to Tangerine, but I feel as if that this aspect of her personality is drowned underneath all her passive aggressiveness. Now, you could argue that Captain Mancini compensates for all the cruelty in the film, which I would agree with to an extent. He is one of the more caring and friendly characters in the film, but still, he teaches the kids to lay anyone who doesn't look like them as normies, thus demeaningly segregating them from the rest of society and undermining his teachings about not judging people by their looks. Not to mention he'd rather send them back to the Pale than find a way to help them return to their true home in space. Speaking of which, the world building for this film is beyond confusing. Firstly, where are the Garbage Pale Kids from? Another planet? Another dimension? An asteroid? A parallel universe? It's never clear. The kids state that they've come to Earth to find their friends, but what motivated their friends to travel to Earth? We never see the true home of the Garbage Pail Kids, so it's hard to work out what triggered their friends to leave. Do you want to know what makes this confusion even more frustrating? When we find out that the Garbage Pail Kids friends were killed at the state home for the ugly, yes, the film handles the news so tastelessly. The scene where Mancini reveals that the kids are all dead has goofy, upbeat music playing in the background as he rushes over his explanation as fast as he can. Captain, what about all the other children? Yes. Remember the garbage truck? We were too late. We'll just go and check that everybody's out safe. Okay, come on, children. Then that's it. The rest of the garbage pail kids are forgotten, never brought up again or grieved over. What the fuck, movie? Secondly, the state home for the ugly is such a ridiculous, out-of-nowhere concept. What inspired society to build such a place and who the hell approved of it? Yes, Mancini and Dodger even exclaimed that they can't believe this place exists, but that just made me wonder how they never noticed it, considering what an uproar or protest it would cause if announced to the public. Also, the building isn't exactly hard to spot, and its company isn't discreet about its intentions, as its employees are directly sent out to streets to capture supposedly ugly people. The folks running the home are no supermodels themselves, so why were they chosen to manage such a building? They look like they meet the standards required to be prisoners, so what makes them any less of a threat or menace compared to those they've captured? So, what about the puppetry, the focus of this review series? Well, as you can see, these puppets look terrifying. There's making your characters look quirky and unconventional, then there's creating fuel for nightmares. The puppets reach this disturbing realm of warped, uncanny valley with their oversized heads, pasty textures, soulless, bulging eyes, and faces that make them look like they're 60 years old rather than children. I know that this film was made after the Cabbage Patch Dolls creators charged a lawsuit against Tops, so they had to be very super careful about designs, but the compromise shouldn't have been make them look as ugly as possible, because then the audience will want to keep looking away from the film. The kids in the original cards weren't horrible to look at. They were supposed to look cute. That's what made them funny, seeing adorable kids in a corrupt context. It's the same reason why South Park works on a comedic level. The animatronic heads weren't even finished when the movie started filming, and you can really tell. There's something very off-kilter and rushed about them, particularly because the brows and mouths can barely move at all, making us aware of the robotics ticking away inside the heads. To be fair though, the actors piloting the puppets do pretty good jobs in their roles, being very understanding of what their characters' mannerisms should be like. However, the voices used for the puppets are painful to listen to. The actors all screech, wail, mumble, or shout their lines. Hey, that's a mustard. This is made worse by how the puppets keep talking and talking and talking, even if the camera isn't on their faces. Jim Cummings lends his voice to a couple of the Garbage Pail Kids, and shockingly, he sounds very out of his game. Most likely due to poor direction, though. 
What I find funny is that after seeing the finished film, Cummings joined the protest to keep the film out of theaters. <laughs> To conclude, the Garbage Pail Kids movie is the very definition of a cash cow train wreck. I had a really hard time watching it, feeling nauseated by its grimy, mean-spirited atmosphere and thoroughly annoyed by how obnoxious the Garbage Pail Kids came off. Unsurprisingly, director Rod Amato really didn't want to make this movie. He only did it as part of a contract deal. The passion clearly wasn't there, but when it comes down to it, maybe the film was destined to not work. The Garbage Pail Kids are best appreciated as they were intended, tongue-in-cheek trading cards painted by highly talented artists. You take one look at a card, laugh a bit, then move on to the next. That's the beginning and the end of the Garbage Pail Kids novelty. Although, in a day and age where South Park exists, maybe a Garbage Pail Kids movie could work, and perhaps this film just missed the mark. If you- Ah, <sighs> that's the last time I let a puppet decide an episode of this show. Anyway, that was the last episode of Season 4 of Puppet Panic. When I return in Season 5, I'll be discussing Thomas and the Magic Railroad. And yes, it does count as puppetry. I'll explain why next month. Cheerio, folks.